Hey and welcome to another episode of Herifit FC here in Vanilla FM and today we're going to take a look at the second season in the Premier League. We are playing in October 2032. I'm going to show you the transfers that we did this year and also how the team is doing. The team is actually doing slightly worse than last time but we'll get on to that in a minute. So, first of all, let's talk about transfers out. Uh, transfers out history. So we spent 20, uh, 37 million on transfers in, and we'll go through them in a minute. Uh, and we then spent, uh, sorry, received 4.4 million in transfers out. Uh, two of the things that happened um, that I want to show you. So two of the players that we lost are two youth players that got poached by bigger clubs. We got half a million for each. In fact, I got a little bit more because uh, I got a transfer clause as well. For this one she doesn't show here which I'm a little bit surprised so I got um, half a million when they first poached them and another 600,000 or so uh, afterwards and uh, Joe Jones got half a million when he first got poached and three million after that as well so we've already banked for nearly five million in um, in transfers for these guys in this still some other clauses to to use up as well Harry Suter was the biggest loss that we had so we bought him last year for 19 million pounds he then decided that he didn't want to renew his contract and was instead going to play in France I don't know why because he never played in France before um, yeah so he's there now in League One in um, OM uh. So yeah, that's, that was a bit sad. We also sold Ross Davis, our previous um, um, captain. Not He wasn't playing last year, he was on loan last year. So we were already planning to sell him anyway, so we finally did that. Um, Fabian Garcia, um, we also sold back to Uruguay. Wasn't a great player in the end. Anthony Pat Patterson is an interesting one. He was on loan with us last year with a mandatory fee of 900,000 and then we turned around and sold them for 2 million to Ipswich. So that was pretty good I think. So he came from the Premiership, a Premier Division and went back to the Championship now. Where apparently he's been playing and uh, he's not doing too badly so good for him. Um, and then what else do we got? Oh yeah we got we sold Ismail for 1.3 million. He's past his peak and we also sold coal for 19k uh, somewhere in Spain so that was that so those are all the players that we transferred out let's take a look at the squad for this year and go through what we have so Usmain was with us last year he was one of our main goalkeepers alongside Anthony Patterson he actually received the award of youngest player of the year sorry uh, young player of the year um, He's only 23, plays for France, uh, well he's French, I'm also, uh, in other news, I'm also the French um, coach. Not for now, I'm just kind of having a play with it, um, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if I can really be bothered with it while I'm doing the Hereford save. But yeah, so I obviously brought him into the squad, I didn't play him, I played someone else, but um, he's the third goalkeeper in there, because I thought, well he's French and I'm uh, the coach of France, why not? have him in there as well so he's our first choice goalkeeper and then we bought for the future as well neil nolan um and he was with us before for a brief um brief spell in the championship so we came back on a permanent basis and he can be because he's not so bothered about being first goalkeeper he can be our backup for years to come he's pretty good as a backup on the right side of the fence, we have two new players. First of all, Louis Mayer, who we wanted to get last year, but didn't. So we ended up getting him this year in the end. 7.5 million from West Brom, and he's probably gonna end up retiring here. Uh, and then on loan, we also have Anthony O'Donoghue. Um, and he's a wonder kid. He's on loan, he's quite an expensive loan from Aston Villa. So he, I'm hoping he could be quite good and develop within season as well, which is what we need, 20 years old. Uh, in defense, we have a few new players. 
And I also moved some players around. So on the wide center back role, we have a new player. We have Otavio. Um, 30 years old. For We bought him from Brighton for 6.75 million. He played in Portugal before that and obviously Brazil, where he's from. Uh, and then I moved um, Zahari. He used to play in the centre back um, position, but now he's in the wide centre back role. So we, I just moved them across, rejigged the um, the the things around, and then Tom went. He used to be in the wide centre back role, and I moved him across to be a central defender instead. So Tom is still with us as well from last season. He's just playing in a different role. And the other role, the other player in that is still Max, uh, um, but Max is on his way out, so I'm going to sell Max in January, hopefully, and um, replace him. In the uh, non nonsense centre back position, we still have the same two from last year. We have uh, Yoshinori still, um, so he's obviously we bought him for the future and he's developing quite well. And the other player in that is Linda, who is also young and plenty to develop still. No changes in defensive midfield, we still have Fed, our captain, and we still have. Um, where is he? Elisha, who now plays for Ghana as well. Oh, did he play before? I can't remember. Anyway, there's still the two. Obviously, they're both past their peak, way past their peak. They are declining fast. So this is going to be one position where I'm going to focus effort in January to, to replace. I, I don't know, to be honest, if I'll have the budget to do it in January. So I might have to wait till next year. In the meantime, I think they'll both retire anyway. Um, midfield, we have uh, Christian still. So Christian well, is, is named in the top 50. One of the kids uh, it, last year became number 43. I don't think he'll be named this year. He hasn't developed out that much. But he's our um, biggest goal scorer at the moment with five goals in competitive matches. And then we went and got back one of these players from our past. Uh, he was with us for a short spell at the end of the season uh, in 29-30. Uh, 11 apps, 3 goals, 1 player of the match. So that was a brief spell and now we bought him on a permanent deal for 9.5. Um, so Josip is going to be there for the foreseeable future, I think. We also had to get someone else. He said he wanted a player to settle with. So I just went and loaned out a young Croatian player from Dynamo, from the team that he came from, Kale Fumic, from Fumic. And um, yeah, he was happy with that. And then, and then I stuck him in the end of tw 21s. So that is that. Um, so that's Josip. On the right side of attack, on the attacking midfield, I mean, we have another player who's back with us on loan, Alejandro Lorenzo. He was with us before, uh, while he was still um, based in Argentina. And now he moved to Newcastle uh, and he's being loaned out every season. So he's with us this year, excuse me. <coughs> I'm really sleepy. And we still have Seb F F Ferdinand, who's probably going to leave soon I guess uh, we need to look at someone better for that position eventually and then I moved Lamy to the left side which I don't know if you remember all the way back here in this season here where we were loaning him from Blackburn he, that's where he played he played in the left side um, and then we played in the right played him in the right side ever since he joined us in the club I think that's right I'm so right in saying that and this season he's playing on the left again and the other player on that left side is still Riley Owen. So the, this left side is a play a, again another position that we need to look at improving in the future. And in attack we have the same two. We have Emra still and the player to retire soon, Georges. He's a, he actually left the club in the summer. 
It was kind of weird. He left the club because he said, you know, I'm going to retire. I'm not going to renew my contract. And then, and then halfway through the summer, he was like, oh, actually, I, I still want to play for another year. Uh, would you take me back? Essentially. And we were like, yeah, we'll take you back. And so we signed him on uh, so he can just be a backup to Emra. And that is it. So we spent quite a lot of money on these, but we still have plenty of money coming in and plenty of money in the bank. Um, so the biggest biggest purchase was Yossip, but we still we also had some quite expensive loans. Um, Octavio has a clause still to activate uh, with add-ons. So pretty well spread out we have four players that we play that we paid like uh, about about eight to nine million so it was quite well spread out compared to last year where basically spent it all on Harry uh, and then a few more transfers so yeah things getting a bit more more balanced here and um, I'm trying to attract better players to the club as well but you know it is quite tough going because we are still quite a small club with small reputation, so it can be difficult. But we do have a few wonder kids in in here. So we have Christian, which I, I don't think he'll be a, a wonder kid anymore. I don't think his potential is, you know, developed that much. We have Anthony, but he's not ours. And then I think these guys would still count as young players. So we have potentially Yoshinori, who could be a potential wonder kid. Definitely these two are named already as one of the kids. Oh, well, this one was actually. He's lost his um, media description. He was de designated as a one of the kid. Kamal and Yosip were both. Uh, I don't think Yoshinori is. No. Um, fullback. Yeah, they all lost their one of the kid their designation. I think that's it. Lorenzo, yeah. Okay. So the only one the kid media description that we have at the moment is Anthony. Because obviously he's not ours, he's on loan, so he doesn't really count. But hopefully we can um, attract some more young players with high potential like that. We have two in the squad at the moment that are really promising, but they haven't developed yet. Um, fully. This guy's getting really good though. Wow. So I'll play him in this position, but he's not good enough for that yet. How about here? Um, defensive support. Yeah, he's not there yet. He's getting there, but he's not there yet. Could sell him though. Anyway, we're gonna play um, Arsenal. Oh, before we do, uh, let me just go to club info facilities we are it's not showing here but we are working on a stadium expansion of 2000 seats and i'm hoping this time it will actually be 2000 seats because last time they promised 2000 seats and they only d d delivered 50 so that was a bit weird uh, we now have state-of-the-art training facilities we still have exceptional youth facilities and exceptional sorry excellent youth facilities and exceptional academy coaching so we still can develop our youth facilities a couple more grades. Uh, exceptional youth recruitment. I don't actually know what the top is for that. It might be we might be at the top now. Uh, so that got increased in the summer as well. Um, I'll I'll take a look and then I'll I'll let you know. I can't remember off the top of my head if that is the top you can have for youth recruitment. We're gonna play Arsenal here, and they're gonna kick us in the butt probably. Um, if you look at the league table, we are very much trailing at the back. It's been quite a tough season for us. I don't think we have won yet in the league. We've won cup, um, oh, what's it called? Cup games. Let me just um, show you. If you go to schedule, we won against West Ham for the second round of the Carabao, and we won against Wolves on penalties for the third round. So we're going to play Everton next. This one's going to be tough. The fourth round's going to be tough because Everton. So West Ham is 13th in the league. Wolves is 15th in the league. But Everton is all the way in 11th. 
that might be pushing it a bit. So I don't know if I'll be able to get past those guys. So we are struggling a lot this season for for points. I mean, two draws, it's all we've got in the league. I'm hoping things get slightly easier as the season goes on. Once the players start gelling in a bit more. I do um, add in to the weekly training a session on team bonding and also community outreach. I'm not sure what the community outreach does, but yeah, uh, team bonding is essential um, at the moment. The team cohesion, if I go back out to dynamics, it's only average. There were a lot of intake for this year. Uh, we do have a healthy amount of team leaders and so on. But obviously, Dietrich wants to leave. Um, yeah. They don't really have the, you know, the green lines that we talk about, the um, playing with each other. There's only like maybe one of those relationships in the, the fence between who would that be? That would be between Linda and Max. Neither not, neither of them are playing right now. And even so, it's not like a bright green line. It's more like a faded green. So. As far as transfer budget, we have only 3 million in the, in the bank for that, in the budget for that. So it doesn't allow for... Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Mm, let's do some subs. Uh, Anthony. And Octavio. This guy. Emra. And... Uh, let's change these guys. Basically, just giving fresh legs out to these positions that are not doing so good. Not that it matters, we're never going to win this match against Arsenal, it's way beyond what we can achieve. So you can see there behind the goal that we have our terrace has been converted to seated. So that's the away seating, I think. Um, it's not full, but it's, you know, you can kind of see there's gaps, but um, according to the match info. Yeah, there we go. It's sold out. So the animation isn't quite right, I don't think, sometimes. Now, it's quite exciting to start hearing things about the new game. Miles has released that um, news item about the UI and how it's going to look and how it's going to feel and the features and some of the features they're going to drop. Mainly like network games and stuff like that and build a club and whatever. But um, yeah, I think obviously because they're building the game from the ground up again. They're just focusing on the essential features. Um, so yeah. I'm obviously planning to play the beta. And um, I'll be putting everything on here. Um, as well. So if you want to check out the beta before you buy. Before you commit to it. Um, I'll, be, I'll be playing that. So you can always 
see what it's like on here. I'll probably be playing Hereford. Um, one of the one of the features that's going to be interesting is the the um, being able to seamlessly go between male and female clubs, men's and women's clubs. Um, so that will be interesting. Like I I think I'll probably just carry on with Hereford because that's kind of you know it's what the channel has been all about. It's about taking Hereford up to the Premiership. Um, that's what I've always done, so I'll probably carry on doing that, the simulation that I always do. But um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Maybe I could do the beta in the women's, just because it's new. Um, and then once the full game is released, I will do Hereford. And then that way, because oh, <laughs> this is something I've, I've noticed, is because I start the beta and then I don't want to start again. Any features that they release, or any bug fixings that they release, some of those bug fi fixings um, are only resolved if you start a new save. But because I've never started a new save, this is the same save that I started in the beta. All of those things will still be in my game. Um, all the things that only get resolved when you start a new save. N n none of those things are fixed in my save, so you'll still see some of those things. Uh, to be f to be fair, I lost track now of what they are, but um, yeah. So I think what I'll do, what I'll do is dive into the women's leagues uh, in the beta because I want I still want to get a feel for what it's like. Um, but then once the full game is released, I'll start my Hereford series. Um, so maybe keep the beta series completely separate from from the Hereford series. So we got two goals out of this game, which is really good, but it's still a loss. Um, I guess we'll take that. Scoring two goals against Arsenal, not so bad. So yeah, I'll continue now until past the winter transfers and we'll catch up and see where we are. I'm hoping we won't be in the relegation zone. We won't be too much above it, but I'm hoping, and I'm just happy with 17th or 16th or something like that. Um, just above above the relic above this red red zone here that would be nice okay thanks so much for watching until the end and i'll see you in the next one take care bye bye